Hi everyone, just a quick video touching on some ideas related to general relativity to kind of act as a, a capstone, if you will, to our, our uh, discussion of special relativity. General relativity really comes about from the fact that we must have a relativistic theory of gravity. So um, electromagnetism is naturally relativistic because that was where relativity came from. And um, we also know that um, magnetism is a consequence of relativity and Coulomb's law. Now, Coulomb's law itself was motivated by Newton's law of gravity. So you might ask, well, is there a parallel for the magnetic force in gravity? The answer to that question is yes. There is something called the gravitomagnetic force and uh, it's also called frame dragging and has um, been measured. It's very uh, difficult to measure because the gravitational force is so small compared to electromagnetism you know, on the order of 10 to the 20. But um, that has been measured. Basically, you know, you, you've got two parallel lines of current. What that would mean is that you've got two masses in motion. You would expect them to be attracted to one another um, a little bit stronger than they normally are. Well, one way to do that is actually to have two uh, spinning objects. So if you have a spinning object, and you have an object that's orbiting it, like maybe you have a spinning Earth, and you have an object that's orbiting the Earth, you might expect an attraction between those two. And uh, that kind of effect has been observed. Um, uh, however, that's not all there is to the story. And um, it took Einstein another dozen, another decade after he developed special relativity to really crack that nut and figure out what it would be to have a general relativistic or a, a relativistic theory of gravity. The fundamental problem is that the source of the electric force is charge. Okay? The source for the gravitational force is mass. And so even though there is a perfect parallel between Coulomb's law and Newton's law of gravity, there is not a perfect parallel between these charges, quote unquote, right? Because mass increases with speed. Charge does not. And so that introduces a fundamental difference between the two. In fact, it's E equals mc squared that causes the problem. See, the gravitational force or the gravitational field is going to carry energy in the same way that the electromagnetic field is going to carry energy. And the electromagnetic uh, field carries energy, therefore the kinetic energy carries mass and momentum. You know, that's why light actually can push on an object. Even though it's an electromagnetic phenomenon, that energy has mass and momentum content that can actually uh, produce a force. Well, the gravitational field will do the same thing. But on top of that, the gravitational, the energy in the gravitational field is associated with mass, which will itself <laughs> produce more gravitational field. In other words, the gravitational field will always be a little bit stronger because it is itself a source of the gravitational field. It's a source of itself. And so there's, um, so not only is, is there a little bit more gravitational field than there ought to be because of this kind of feeding mechanism, but it also makes the mathematics extremely complicated because you've got this feedback nonlinearity that comes into play and the equations for general relativity that correspond to Maxwell's equations are um, much more difficult to solve. So, but Einstein figured all that out, got it all working in a theory, he just didn't have any solutions. And um, there was a guy named Schwarzschild who came along a year later and basically solved the simplest possible problem. Basically, you have a static charge. What's the gravitational field that's around it? 
Einstein was shocked because he had, it had taken him 10 years to, to just figure out what the formulas were. And here someone figured out uh, a fundamental solution very quickly. He thought it would, it would take decades. But nonetheless, um, Schwarzschild figured it out. And this actually captures the Schwarzschild metric. Um, this is the space-time interval we talked about. We've got dt and uh, dx here representing the distances. And that's what Einstein realized was um, the solution to getting a relativistic theory of gravity, was that the gravitational field actually affects this space-time interval we introduced in the last video. And remember that space-time uh, space interval captures the way in which our perceptions of space and time occur. So this is showing that the gravitational field also does that. And down here, basically, what we've got here is we've got time dilation that occurs, not because of motion, but because of the presence of gravitational field. In other words, clocks tick slower in a gravitational field than they would out in deep space. So the clocks we live with are actually ticking slower than the ones on the International Space Station. And in fact, this calculation is not just academic because the GPS satellites require such extreme accuracy that this effect actually has to be taken into account in order to calculate the correct lengths of, um, that are experienced by the GPS satellites. So, uh, this is the formula for it. We're not really going to use it, but I just wanted to show it up here for completion. One interesting note, note this, um, this R sub S, this is the formula for it, uh, 2 gm over c squared. But the crazy thing about this is that this formula here can go to zero, right? If R, which is the distance from the source, if this r is equal to this value, this is going to go to zero. This whole formula blows up. I divide by zero, right? That's called the Schwarzschild radius, and that is the radius of a black hole. And so if I've got, that's the effective distance at which basically you reach the point of no return. And once you cross that threshold toward a black hole, you'll never get out, no matter how fast you go, even if you're uh, moving at the speed of light. So that's why black holes are black, because light uh, can't get out of them, neither could you. And that concludes relativity.